Hi and welcome back. Can you stop moving for two seconds, please? Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be making DIY wall art. Now this is going to be a mixed type of media, including some handwriting, some calligraphy, some online um, parts such as uh, using your iPad and uh, an Apple Pencil if you have one. If not, I can also give you some other alternatives, whether you're going to handwrite it instead using a felt tip brush pen. Um, but this project is for anyone who wants to spruce up their room or their living room or their house a little bit. And here is just some examples. So. This one, like you can see, it is mixed media, so I did add text here, but this was all handwritten. Now, you can definitely choose to use some cursive font and implement that them yourself and not use a uh, handwriting aspect of it, but it's totally up to you. Um, personally, I'm quite proud of my handwriting, not to toot my own horn, so um, I like to mix it up and put some of my own handwriting plus some text beneath it. So. Today we have two, two different projects, kind of the same idea, whether or not you want to include that text or your handwriting. And then I'm going to show you how to do it on Procreate if you do have an Apple uh, Pencil as well as an iPad to do that on. If not, I'll also show you how to do it with a plain old pen and or a brush pen, but you can also mimic that using a regular pen as well. Lately, we've been seeing a lot of definition art where they include the main word, whether or not it's a real word, um, and with the definition beneath it. And I just thought that would look really nice in my bathroom. So we're going to start off with the Procreate version on the iPad. So I picked the brush pen option, as you just saw, and went to the calligraphy section. And with every down stroke, as I'm writing in cursive, I'm going to press more pressure on the Apple Pen. So as you can see, the Apple Pen is very sensitive. So as soon as I add more pressure, the line becomes thicker. On the upstrokes, I want to do the opposite and apply a little bit of less pressure so that the line is thinner. That's how you get that uh, faux calligraphy type look. And then from there, I'm going to angle it so that the word is at the right size and the right area that I want it. Then I'm going to add a text box, add in the phonetic uh, sound version of the word, so flossum. I also had to go into the internet and get the schwa character as it was not in the keyboard as an option. That is how you have the uh sound for flossum. So flossum is not a real word, but it was one that I thought was very fitting to the overall vibe of what I wanted in my bathroom. And then as you can see here, I changed the font to italicized, which is what, um, you know, typically a dictionary would have. And then I added in what type of word it is, whether it be an adjective, a noun, or a verb, changed the font a little bit, and then made it into a bold word. Then it was type to, time to add in the definition which I typed in full and then changed the font and then also the size. You wanna make sure it was lined up perfectly. Then you're going to make all of the different layers into one grouping so that you can edit it all in one square. So as you can see, just by dragging each piece over, it becomes one group. I was able to move it all together. Then I went into the Flossum layer on its own I noticed that it was just a little bit off, so I wanted to drag it down, as you can see there. And then, once again, I went back to the grouping and wanted to make sure that it was all aligned. So I clicked on um, the grouping option after and clicked one group. And you can see it's all back together. I moved it back up. And then once I decided it, I liked how it looked, I exported the file and chose the best quality. 
Moving on, we are now going to do the mixed media version where half of it is typed. So as you can see here, I printed out meiraki, which is a Greek word, and applied the definition as well. It's all typed. Now we're going to handwrite the a main word using a felt tip brush pen. Now with this hand lettering, it is the same idea as using an apple pen, except for now you actually have a flexible nib. So with this, like the same idea, you're going to apply a heavier pressure on the nib with your hand, of course. And on your down strokes, you're gonna press a little bit harder and then on the up stroke, let a little pressure off. So in this case, I am going letter by letter, and this is in real time, so you get an idea of how slowly I'm writing the word. You'll so soon see afterwards that I do go back and double up the thickness of it, just because I felt that it wasn't quite thick enough. Um, so once I finish up this, you'll see I'll go back a second time, also applying that same pressure and making it a little bit thicker on the downstroke, but also on the upstroke because I want the overall look to be a bit thicker. So we'll just speed through this next part. It's really amazing to see what a difference it makes just applying a little bit of pressure on the downstrokes. And there you have it. That is the mixed media version of this. One is handwritten and the definition is typed. Moving on to our third version. So this is going to be a completely handwritten version. As you can see, to make sure my lines are completely straight, I am using a straight edge to write down some lines in pencil first so that I have a layout for myself to write it. Now, while you can use a ruler and make sure that these lines are evenly spaced, I was just going to freehand it and do it by eye. Now I am just using a simple black pen, and as you can kind of see, I am also doubling up those lines in every letter just so that it is a little bit thicker. I didn't have a pen that was in the correct thickness just to make it simple for myself and just write it once, so I just slightly doubled up the lines. As you can see here, I am writing the phonetic version as you've seen in previous examples. And then I just decided to write in just a plain font, as simple as I could make it. And then we'll just speed through this next part of me writing the definition, but this is all handwritten. I recommend this more for people who have a more aesthetically pleasing handwriting. If you need to just practice making your handwriting better, then this is also a great thing to motivate you. Now looking into the cursive portion, I am doing the same thing as I did in the previous one. And now the next step is to erase your lines. The worst thing you could do is just leave those ugly pencil lines in there. And so once you erase all of that, it just looks very clean cut. There you have your completely handwritten. And then next to it is your half handwritten, half typed. And finally, we have our Procreate version where it was written in Apple Pen and then the definition typed underneath it. So after you print out your document, what you are going to need to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, you know, you're not just going to tape a piece of paper to the wall, are a, is a frame. So you can get a frame, an eight and a half by 11 frame, anywhere you want. You can go to Michael's, you can go to any kind of home goods store and they should have frames. I'm pretty cheap, so I went to my neighborhood Daiso, which is basically the Japanese 99 cent store, and bought this frame. As you can see, it just has like a clear white border, very simple. This paper, obviously, I'm going to take it out. This is the A4 size. So the A4 size is a little bit larger than your typical 8.5 by 11 paper. It's longer, but more narrow. So if you need to uh, trim the edge of your paper, please do so to fit it inside your frame. And just to give you an idea, that is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper where I did trim it and make sure that the back of it is a white sheet of paper that is long enough to cover it. Besides that, you're just going to place the piece of paper that you created and printed out and you're going to put it inside here and you'll have a beautiful result.
as you can see here, the art looks great on the wall, especially if they're stacked in threes. And this is just a really simple at home DIY that anyone can do. Now, if you do decide to do this at home, please do it and tag me in it. I'd love to see your work. And if you'd like to see more projects like this, definitely comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and set your notifications so you know that when I post, it will be every Monday and Thursday, and I will see you next Monday.